morning. Welcome to our service this morning. This morning we're starting a new sermon series. Uh, for the next couple of weeks we'll be looking at the places Jesus walked. And so we've just taken three stories about significant places where Jesus was and unpacking those stories and trying to see what, what God is saying to us through those stories today. And so today Trevor will be starting off that service, uh, that series for us, and I'm sure that we will be blessed by the word that he brings. Just a, a, a short reminder that on the 17th of Feb is Ash Wednesday, and we will be having an a Ash Wednesday service. It will be online. Uh, and so please watch out. We have some interesting things planned. One of them is that you are, we are going to invite you to come and collect a bag of ashes so that you can participate in the service from your home or from wherever you are. And so please watch out for our advertising online for the Ash Wednesday service, but we will be having an online Ash Wednesday service on the 17th of Feb. Our call to worship this morning comes from Psalm 63. You are my God, I worship you. In my heart, I long for you. As I would long for a stream in a scorching desert, I have seen your power and your glory in the place of worship. Your love means more than life to me, and I praise you. As long as I live, I will pray to you. I will sing joyful praises and be filled with excitement like a guest at a banquet. I think about you before I go to sleep and my thoughts turn to you during the night. You have helped me and I sing happy songs in the shadow of your wings. I stay close to you and your powerful arm supports me. Thanks be to God for his word. May I remember this week as we worship together that the love of God has the power to change all of our lives and to bring us life in all of its fullness. May we rely on his love. May we be open to his love. May we be moved by his love, challenged by his love, comforted by his love, surrounded by his love. Amen. Let us worship. Good morning, Northfield. Won't you join us as we worship? Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine.
Let us pray. Father God, what a privilege and a blessing it is to come to you this morning, knowing that we come to a God who loves us this way, that we can boast as your children that this truly is our story, that we were purchased with your blood, that we have been made new. We can boast that our story is that a God put down, a, a, put aside his crown in heaven to come to this earth. That you came into the dark in pursuit of us. That there was no place you wouldn't go to show us some of your love so that we may encounter your presence. And so we, so we are so grateful as we worship you this morning that this can be our story. That you loved us this much. That we are washed in your blood. That we have access right now to your presence. That you are not a God who is far and distant, but you are a God who desires to be close to us. You are a God who has made himself accessible to us. You are a God whose Holy Spirit is with us right now as we worship. And so, Father God, we give you all the praise and all the glory this morning, knowing that we have the privilege of being in your presence and of singing these songs and of holding on to hope. But you are a God who does not disappoint. And you are a God who is present. Amen.
Well, it's really good to be uh, sharing with you uh, in worship here today at uh, Northfield Methodist Church. And uh, we begin today a, a new sermon series, and it's called uh, Places Jesus Walked. And one of those places was the land of the Gerasenes. And I'm going to read now from the Gospel of Mark um, that story from that place. It's the longest story in the shortest Gospel. So it must be pretty important. So I'm going to read to you from Mark uh, chapter 5 and I'm reading from verse 1 uh, to 20. They came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gerasenes. And when he had stepped out of the boat, immediately a man out of the tombs with an unclean spirit met him. He lived among the tombs, and no one could restrain him any more, even with a chain. For he had often been restrained with shackles and chains, but the chains he wrenched apart, and the shackles he broke in pieces, and no one had the strength to subdue him. Night, night and day, among the tombs and on the mountains, he was always howling and bruising himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran, he ran, bowed down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, what have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. For he had said to him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And then Jesus asked him, What is your name? And he replied, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he begged him earnestly not to send them out of the country. Now there on the, on the hillside, a great herd of swine was feeding. And the unclean spirits begged him, send us into the swines, let us enter them. And so he gave them permission. And the unclean spirits came out and entered the swine and the herd, numbering about 2,000, rushed down the steep bank into the sea and were drowned in the sea. The swine herds ran off and told it in the city and in the country. And then people came to see what had happened. And they came to Jesus and they saw the demoniac sitting there, clothed and in his right mind. The very man who had the legion and they were afraid. And those who had seen what had happened to the demoniac and to the swine reported it. And then they begged Jesus to leave the neighborhood. And as he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed by demons begged him that he might be with him. But Jesus refused and said to him, go home, go home to your friends 
and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and what mercy he has shown you. And he went away and he began to proclaim in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him. And everyone, everyone was amazed. And so we thank God uh, so much for that um, very powerful story. And we pray that uh, somehow today, uh, through that story, Christ, the living Christ, uh, may encounter you and me uh, afresh. Amen. Uh, many, many years ago, uh, I came across a delightful uh, Peanuts uh, cartoon. Uh, Peanuts was my favorite uh, comic strip, and you don't find too many Peanuts cartoons around today. And two of the chief characters, uh, Lucy and Linus, uh, were in uh, a very deep conversation uh, with each other. And uh, Lucy was seeking to explain to Linus that in every human heart there is a very powerful inner struggle going on between good and evil. And Linus listened to Lucy and then uh, Linus pressed uh, his hands against his chest and said to Lucy, Lucy, I think I know what you mean. I can feel those forces fighting within me right now. I begin with that, um, with that cartoon strip because I want to ask you today, uh, wherever you may be, wherever you may be watching, listening, I want to ask whether there is an inner struggle that is going on in your own heart uh, right now. Between good and evil, between truth and falsehood, between uh, compassion and apathy, maybe even between life and death. And perhaps as I ask you uh, whether you're experiencing that inner struggle, maybe some of you, like Linus, would say to me now, Trevor, I think I know just what you mean. I can feel them fighting within me right now. It's against this backdrop uh, that I want to invite you um, to explore with me this uh, dramatic story of, of Jesus uh, and his encounter with this Gerasene demoniac. It's a, it's a haunting story that describes a man uh, wrestling with his own inner torment and conflict. It's a, it's a complex story that raises very, very important questions about the nature of evil and the demonic today. It's also a very intriguing story, isn't it, with pigs uh, dashing into the sea and drowning. But I want to suggest today, uh, predominantly, that it's a very hopeful story. And it communicates very, uh, very powerfully 
to you and to me today the liberating power of God in Jesus Christ to deliver us from the grip of evil uh, in our lives. So come with me just for a moment as we step into the story right now and uh, as I often do, keep one foot in the story but keep the other foot firmly placed uh, in your own life right now. And maybe as we do this, maybe as we do this, as we keep one foot in the gospel story, the other foot in the story of our own lives, perhaps Christ may encounter you, me, in a new way today with his liberating power over the forces of evil in human life. Notice a few things with me. Notice firstly the inner struggle uh, that was raging uh, in this man's life. There is a very graphic verse in that story. You may want to look at it. It's verse 5. Uh, night, night and day, night and day, he lived amongst the tombs and on the mountains howling and bruising himself with stones. That's a very, very graphic picture of what happens in our lives when evil gains the upper hand. When evil gains the upper hand in your life and my life, we we walk amongst the tombs. We begin to experience a terrible deadness uh, in our lives. I never forget once someone said to me, Trevor, have you ever noticed that evil is live spelt backwards? The power of evil robs us of life, of our dignity, and that is why any form of oppression, political, economic, gender, any kind of oppression is demonic. When evil gains uh, the upper hand in our lives, we kind of roam around on our own in the mountains we are alienated, we get cut off from healthy relationships and healthy community and we find ourselves, find ourselves living very uh, secretive, uh, isolated lives. When evil gains the upper hand in our lives, we bruise ourselves with stones we get trapped in, in destructive ways of, of thinking and behaving that harm ourselves and harm those around about us. I wonder, I wonder, and I ask this question very seriously today, I wonder whether you myself can identify with this Gerasene demoniac today? Are you walking uh, among the tombs? The other day someone said to me, Trevor, I just feel so, so dead inside. You find yourself cut off, alienated, living a secret existence. Do you find yourself bruising yourself with stones, caught up, caught up in destructive thinking and destructive behaviors, caught up in destructive addictions, 
caught up in, in ways of relating that are hurting people deeply around you. You know, the first step to find in deliverance, to find in freedom, the first step always is to acknowledge our condition. And this is what this man did. He came to Jesus because he was desperate. He was hopeless. He didn't have the power to liberate himself. Jesus met him at his deepest point of bondage. I'll never forget many years ago, uh, one of my mentors saying to me, Trevor, Jesus' address in your life is endoftherope.com. And it's when we find ourselves often desperate, hopeless, feeling hopeless about ourselves, feeling powerless to, to, to change ourselves, it's at that point, if we're willing to acknowledge it, that Jesus meets us. Come back with me to the story. N notice, notice this encounter between Jesus and the demoniac. Uh, the demoniac comes to Jesus and, and, we, and we are told bows before him, throws himself on the ground in respect and admiration, maybe even in worship, we don't know. And at the same time, the demon in him crying out to Jesus, do not torment, do not torment us. I'm just so struck by how Jesus responds. He welcomes the man. There is no condemnation of that man whatsoever. He receives the man, accepts him, and then asks him a beautiful question. What is your name? What is your name? The dignity of being asked your name. And we know that Jesus releases this man from, from the demonic hold that exists in his life. And later in the story, when, do you remember when the crowds come out to find out what has happened? They find this man sitting with Jesus, clothed, and in his right mind. This is just an incredible, incredible picture of the gospel. That God comes to us in Jesus Christ and liberates us, frees us, delivers us from the tentacles of evil in our life so that we can enter into a new life, a human life of dignity and sanity and freedom. That's what happened to this man. It can happen for you, for me. That as we turn towards Christ in our desperation, in our hopelessness, in our powerlessness, in our own struggle with evil, Christ liberates us, liberates us, frees us. And we move from, we move from, from bondage uh, to freedom. We move from, from self-rejection uh, to, to self-acceptance. And we move from insanity to sanity. Maybe today, even in this moment, in your desperation and my desperation, we'll come to Jesus and, and as it were, throw ourselves before him so that he can minister to us personally and deeply and powerfully. 
Come back with me to the story. Notice one last detail. Notice that Jesus uh, gives this man, this man who's been delivered from evil, Jesus gives him something to do. Uh, this man wanted to stay with Jesus. It's, it's almost as if uh, this man wanted to depend on Jesus in an unhealthy way, and Jesus won't let him. Jesus says to him, I want you to go back to your own community. I want, to, I want you to go back to your own family. I want you to go back to your own friends. I want you to stand on your own two feet. And I want you to depend healthily on me, not unhealthily. And I want you to tell others and share with others the truth of what has happened in your life. You know, when we experience the uh, power of Christ's deliverance in our lives, Jesus always gives us something to do so that we can walk healthily in our deliverance. And I want to suggest that one of the most healthy things that we can do when Jesus touches us and frees us is we can begin to live in the truth. In the New Testament, the evil one is described as the father of lies. Wherever there is deception present, the evil one is at work. And one of the deepest ways in which we can walk healthily in our deliverance is to put on the belt of truth to begin to face honestly what's going on in our lives. To stop being secretive about our addictions and attachments and destructive ways of behaving. To begin stop telling lies. To begin to re relate honestly and openly and vulnerably to human beings around about us. to relate truthfully to God, to stop playing religious games, to be honest and open with the living Lord. And it's as we, as we embrace a life of truth, depending in a healthy way on Jesus to help us, we move ever deeper into a life of freedom, a life of wholeness, a life of sanity. So let me bring this to an end. I don't know what's going on at the moment in your life, in your relationships, in your world. Maybe you're in a place of real desperation and hopelessness and powerlessness about your life. Maybe the powers of evil are just causing so much havoc. Maybe today we can turn to the one who asks us our name, who relates to us personally with deep mercy and love, not a word of condemnation. And as we open ourselves up to him with simple faith and trust, we open our lives up to the liberating power of God in our lives. May we discover that freedom. Amen. Now unto him who is able